Okay, I got a question here from a video I made uh, quite a while ago. Uh, ORO, the RC overload. He says, uh, so you think the earth is flat, question mark, then answer me this. How come every other planet in the solar system and all the ones that scientists have found through telescopes are round? According to you, Earth is the only flat Earth for a billion plus miles in every direction. Okay, so... Um, the way I would answer this is, you know, the, the very obvious is Earth is not a planet. Okay, so if we look um, at Genesis 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So you go outside and what do you see? Heaven above and earth below. Now right there we, uh, we've established a flat earth from the very beginning of the Bible. Now, where your assumption is wrong is assuming that Earth is a planet, is a round planet, and that when you look up in the sky, you imagine that there are other round planets. I mean, that's that feeds really well into the Mormon philosophy that you're going to be God of this Earth, and then you're going to have... Uh, you're going to be a God of another earth. You're going to be the Jesus Christ of another earth in the future. That sort of thing. You have a whole planet of women that you can have sex with freely. I mean, that's really the whole concept of this wishful thinking that this is one of billions of planets. And it's not true. It's not in the Bible. And, uh, it's all based on assumption. It's all based on imagination. Of course, we read in Genesis 6 that God destroyed the entire world because God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So let's explore a little further and uh, sort of uh, hammer home this point if you will so in first Corinthians 14 or I'm sorry 15 verse 41 okay maybe I should start right up here to give a little context uh, all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial one is one, excuse me, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Okay, so uh, the main point is that each star is different from another star. And so there are no planet Earths in the sky. They are stars and they are all one unique from another. All right, so that, that cannot be in dispute. I mean, you could you could lie all you want, but it's not the truth, right? And then, of course, uh, we are given a, a promise of hope for a better world. Um, perhaps I should, you know, I'll, I'll go back to that other point that I was going to make, but um, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and here in Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So there's coming a new heaven and a new earth. Not just a new earth, but also a new heaven. Okay, and so uh, just to reiterate this, uh, 
point that we seek a better world, uh, a better future where there is no more sin, there is no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, and, you know, just no more misery, period. Right? And so we read in Hebrews 11 all about how it's about faith, how it's always been about faith. And uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they'd been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country. That is, in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed <clears throat> to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. And, of course, uh, we read about, uh, I think that's John 14, where Jesus talks about, um, I'm, oh, wait a second. Excuse me. Yeah, no, this is it. Let your heart... Be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Excuse me. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, in the way. You know, okay, so uh, obviously, you know, he, Jesus is preparing a better world for us. And when he returns, uh, we that believe in him will be partakers, if you will, of this better world that's to come. So that's where we put our hope and everlasting life is that we are uh going to be in our glorified bodies, bodies that will never die, and placed on a, uh, on a, in a city, if you will, where uh, there is no more sin. You know, in this world, we have all kinds of uh, wickedness. And so we seek a world where there is no, absolutely none, no wickedness whatsoever. So that's where our hope is. Our hope is not in this idea, oops, excuse me. Where am I at here? Our hope is not in this idea of other planets. Now, I know that's what you want to believe. You want to believe there's another earth out there, and we can just move from this earth to another earth, and we'll be, you know, we'll have everlasting life. That's not, you're, that's not going to happen because you're going to die, period. Regardless of anything and everything, you are going to die, and the fact of the matter is you need a Savior, Okay. So, uh, I think that's enough on that point. But I appreciate the comment and the question. Uh, another thing that I like to say typically is, you know, when people say, uh, so if the earth is flat, you know, and then my response would be, well, if the earth is flat, then why do my feet stink? I mean, you're just, it, there's no logic to some of these questions, in my opinion. But I appreciate them all the same.